do good business with their motorcycles guys road site or road dog or I got a I don't really quite remember the name the way this scooter sounds it's not too loud it's not too low and just by the, the littlest twist on the throttle let me show you guys something right here so basically when I grip this I know it's hard oh look at that still got that freaking rubber piece on there all right guys so let me try like this focus on this little throttle right here no cars behind me so I'm just gonna barely turn this thing So that's where I'm at right there. I'm not even gonna turn it no more. And that takes me up to 30, 35 miles an hour. Just that little, that little freaking twist. Just turn it up a little bit more. I mean, turn it just a tad, a little bit more. Heading up to 40 miles an hour. And this scooter really doesn't take much of a it doesn't take much of a twist of the throttle at all. All right, here comes the uh, sidewinder right here. This is gonna be the. Uh, I love this road as a kid. I could always tell where we were at because of the road. I'd be sleeping in the car, and I could tell when we swerved, swayed to the right, and then we would sway to the left. And I could tell in about maybe 10 minutes we'd be back at the house just from this road right here. Yeah, the only way you're going to break in one of these machines I suggest is try to do very like one day I'll do a uh, riding around town next day I'm gonna because you don't want to just ride all one month just around town babying her because whenever you do I was watching a YouTube channel and it didn't make some sense to me he says guys there there's all sorts of theories about and this guy was in a mechanic suit and stuff and uh, he looked like he got pretty much knowledge about uh, you know what he's talking about and automotive so anyhow he goes, uh, when you're breaking in a vehicle or a ATV, scooter, whatever engine you're breaking in, guys, right? Uh, break it in the way you're going to want to treat it. If you're going to want to baby it all its life, then break it in baby in it. If you want to break it in that you want to go high speeds and you want to travel on the freeway, well, then I'll be damned. Get on that highway and break it in. He goes, that, you're going to want to seat the right grooves according to your driving pattern. And that makes a lot of sense to me, guys. So basically I do, uh, I want to ride this, uh, this scooter is meant for long stretches, like uh, I want to say at least maybe 45 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour. So I don't want to break it in no 20 mile an hour and then all of a sudden, uh, okay, what's well broken in, I'm going to take it 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, but then it, it, you just want to start the grooves from the start, I guess, and it makes sense, man, I, to me it does. I don't want to break this thing at no break it in at 10 miles an hour 20 and then all of a sudden I'm gonna say okay guys now it's time to drive it normal the scooter ain't used to that normal wear and tear it's gonna be like man I ain't used to this man all right let's go ahead and get used to it then it's you know might as well get it used to from the start this is a road I would never ride on with my 50 cc because uh, a lot of traffic goes on this road and they go pretty fast like 50 miles an hour 55 60 65 and so now I got this here scooter and I'm gonna give it a try I think this video is already pretty long enough I think I'm gonna pull over and end it and start another one 
get to the house and figure out which one I want to upload. Man, there's a lot of cornfields. Anybody ever watch that one scary movie that's called Children from the Corn? As a kid, I was scared of that movie, even though I watched it, you know, I wouldn't watch it alone, hell no. But now I look at it, all the movies that used to scare me back then in the 80s, 90s or whatever, I look at them now and I'd be like, how phony. I remember uh, Freddy Krueger. Now I'm trying to look at it and I'm thinking, man, well, I was really terrified of Freddy Krueger. <laughs> oh man. I laugh at him now, he's comedy. But yeah, I can see it from a kid's point of view, back being a kid. Our imagination really got to the good, uh, the best of us as a kid. Hamlo Road. If I'm right, this is going to lead up to Granton School. These are my old playing grounds when I used to ride my BMX everywhere. My mountain bike. I just, yeah, my mountain bike. So in these orchards, this is where my playground was as a kid. I'd be out here just trying to keep my mind from being bored. There was uh, no Nintendo at the time. No uh, internet, guys. So I uh, basically just came out here and thought about where's Bigfoot at. You know, just imagination, man. Can you imagine being a kid back then? There was no internet. There was, no, uh, there was only an Atari. Everybody knows what Atari is. I was playing pinball. Pinball would be our entertainment back then. And uh, I remember I had G.I. Joe's. I always wanted to buy G.I. Joe's and uh, go out to the dirt, make some kind of water, some kind of battlefield. And, and kids these days are pretty lucky now with uh, laptops and tablets and pretty much motorbikes. And it's a trip, man. So, even when I was a kid, before then, there was kids that's in the cowboy days way before my time, you know? I imagine how bored it was back then. No Atari, no nothing, no G.I. Joe's. Good Lord. I remember I always uh, try to make my bicycle sound like a dirt bike. I get a playing card, clamp it on with the, one of those clothes, clothes lines, little clips. And uh, the, the playing card would flap in between the spokes. Sound like a dirt bike. I'm glad I came out here. It's doing my mind some good. I like that tree house, or, uh, the bird house. I call it a tree house. So we got 20 miles on her already, guys. What I'll probably do out here is sit out here in the shade, let her cool down. Let the motor cool down like 20, 30 minutes. And then I'll review my, I'll have a cigarette, let the engine cool, and then uh, go back the same way I came. You know what guys, I'm a little lost. I thought this was going to be a school out here. Where the hell am I? Damn, I don't know where the hell I'm at, to tell you the truth. Bounce to find out where I'm at right now. Here's a road right here. Where the hell am I? Downy. The road sounds familiar to me. Downy, downy, downy. Well, I'm going right. Man, I'm totally lost. I thought I was going to take a break right here at an elementary school. There ain't no damn elementary school right there. Yeah, this carburetor is not tuned in right. 
I don't know if I should be doing this long old ride the way it is right now. This cushion is hella, hella soft. The seat that I'm sitting on, it's hella soft. Every bump that I feel, I, I know you guys can see the bumps, but I don't really feel them at all. Keys Road, okay, I know where I'm at now. Well, you know what, let's go towards Turlock. I get scared when I see those memorials, man. I told you guys, this is a dangerous road right here. And right there, there was somebody's end of their life right there, man. They must have... See, if anybody saw right now, off to the right, right when I turned right, there was uh, somebody's uh, memorial right there. And uh, no doubt that they just entered their life coming on how I came on. Coming off that side road, turning right into traffic, and boom. This is a very fast road that took a lot of people's lives. This is called Keys Road. And it's got it's uh it's got it's a uh, reputation. Look at here's another one. Keys Road has ended a lot of people's lives out here. It's crazy. All right, so so far there's two of them. There's another one right there. And it said rest in peace and marker on that irrigation. So that's three. I don't like it. I can't do no full throttle guys so I'll give it to you guys as it comes man that's crazy I thought I was on like dead empty right now and I barely was able to squeeze in 390 that was really topping it off all I left was the little breather room the little breather room that's in the neck you know I don't like to get it all the way to the very top top but um I guess this thing's got like a little reserve tank in them or I guess what it does is tell you it's empty <clears throat> when you still got like a about an inch worth of gas left you know because uh, like right now I thought I needed to get to the gas station like ASAP and evidently not there was gas in my gas tank still enough to go another 10 miles I believe what a trip I guess better safe than sorry I'd rather get to the gas station thinking I'm on empty than to really be on empty, you know? I love this uh, glider. It reminds me like a glide. I'm just gliding, you know? Smooth selling on this baby. Leave your guys uh, suggestions in the comments. When do you think I should attempt uh, doing my first oil change? I'm barely breaking her in right now with 33 miles. Uh, me, I'm thinking maybe 150 miles, 100 miles. You know, but uh, when do you think I should get all those shavings out of my first oil change? Uh, drop in the comments. I'm, I'll be. Uh, it'd be interesting to hear. I'd like to get guidance. You know, that's what I do. I. I I read reviews, I get suggested advice and whatnot, then I always take it from there. But yeah, as far as uh, being a mechanic, I try, man. I don't consider myself a mechanic, I just consider myself somebody who's willing to do it, you know? To learn and get his hands dirty and learn from, uh, hopefully not mistakes, but <laughs> learning from uh, doing uh, what needs to be done. Yeah, right now my, I don't know if you guys could actually uh, see it in the video. I'm doing a uh, 40. The green is in kilometers, the orange is in. So this is in kilometers. I thought it was in miles per hour, but it's kilometers first and miles per hour. But yeah, once I hit um, 35 miles an hour, I'm hearing like if it's starving for gas or getting too much gas. I don't know what the symptoms is, but it's, uh, it's sputtering, you know, it's like give or take. It's going, it stops, it goes, it stops, it goes, it stops. And it's like, I don't know if it's flooding or if it's uh, not getting so much gas or it needs more air. I don't know. It's got me freaking tripping. So hopefully with just buying a new carburetor, we've solved the problem. The guy also tells me, he goes, man, um, did you take off your bucket seat? And I said, yeah. 
He goes, did you, are you sure none of those vacuum hoses are pinched or anything? It sounds like you got a pinched vacuum hose. I'm like, well, I'll check it out. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to check out all my hoses tomorrow. But then he started thinking, well, it does sound like uh, you don't have no main jet problem, man. He goes, uh, your, the real problem might be just your float bowl being stuck. But yet, I don't know to take his advice or not. Somebody's probably not really wanting to get stuck with replacing parts. And I don't know. But a lot of stuff goes through my mind, man. I don't know if he gave me his honest feedback. I don't know if he's just trying to avoid without sending me a new carburetor. I did tell him I, I needed a, another bolt. Another bolt for my shock didn't come. And I'm just using some other bolt that I found that's not the right fit. Then he goes, well, yeah, you know, you'll be better off going to your hardware store. Because if we, can, if we send you out one, it's going to take a long time to get to you. I'm like, all right. He goes, yeah, just simply take the, the, the matching, the, the one that we did give you, take that in and tell him you need a matching one for that. And I said, yeah, that does make sense. But, you know, where's the customer service? That's where I was thinking. And I hear a lot of the people saying, yeah, man, they needed a part. Uh, their person absolutely send one a replacement right away. I was thinking I was going to get the same kind of love, but I guess not. And time it tells though, man. I can't judge old boy by just the first phone call. He did tell me to call him back if the problem still occurs. Alright guys, I had privacy issues and stuff. I haven't asked my son, but I'm going to go ahead and kill the camera here and I'll continue off in a little bit. See you in a little bit.
All right, let's go ahead and hit it, shall we? You know what, let me try this this way. Since my idol's way up, I don't want to back out with my idol going against me. Oh boy. Well guys, if anybody's like me that's over here tired of the heat, just think winter's coming up in a matter of like maybe 16 weeks so back to the freezing cold here in a little while guys 16 17 weeks I think I'm gonna go ahead and park uh, the 150 and start using Sally. I don't think it's healthy for this here, uh, especially during the braking as well. Breaking it in with the out of uh, tune carburetor, it's not too good, I don't think. So until I get a good tuned carburetor, I'm gonna just buy one of those that you can open up and adjust, replace your jets, whatever, because the ones that come on these here scooters, like Kachi Kid said to me. Uh, they come sealed they're tamper proof you would have to grind them off and you know a lot of work just for 30 bucks you could buy a brand new carburetor 25 30 bucks so instead of trying to readjust this here carburetor and make it uh, not tamper proof I think I just buy a brand new uh, carburetor Yeah, anything over 30 miles an hour, as soon as I hit like 5,000, 5,500 RPMs, and it starts uh, skipping, like uh, sputtering, whatever that word is, man. It feels like it's come, it's give and go, give and go, and it's like, man, you can't go at a constant speed that way because it doesn't, it's sputtering too much, you know? So with that being said, guys, we are going to Parker. And I will be using Sally, and come the first, I'll be riding her again with the new carburetor. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.